that's been clanking on and off all day. Mm -hmm. It's shocking anyway. Did you hear that? I heard that. So, uh, fun fact, it's actually been a couple days since our last shoot here, uh, but it is thankfully much, much warmer. Hoping for an active few days. This week we are actually here with uh, Alexander Petikov again. So Alex hasn't been here since we were filming Beyond the Trail back at the very beginning of September. And that was a, a very quiet introduction to this property compared to how things have been since. So I'm hoping we can really show him uh, just how active the area can be and maybe he can uh, give us some input on what might be going on here. We're gonna do one big night of Bigfooting, which is tonight, and then tomorrow night we'll be here, but it will probably be slightly less active because my son's here with us. Yeah, we'll see how things go. For years, I've been following the Bigfoot phenomenon from the sidelines. As a documentarian, I don't try to insert myself into the stories I'm telling, but rather simply document them. While I appear in some of our film projects and have even made films that are uniquely personal, I ultimately want to tell stories about other people rather than focus on myself. So while I've been a part of investigations in the past, it's never been my own approach. I don't even know what my own approach is. While there are a number of Bigfooters who journey around the country chasing sightings, I wanted my approach to be one where I would head into an area with activity and hunker down in that same spot and just kind of see what happens. My friends in the North American Wood Ape Conservancy have been taking this particular tactic for years in a place they call Area X in Oklahoma. It's one that they've seen great success with. I even had some experiences of my own in Area X back in the summer of 2018. Luckily, I found this place in the heart of Minerva that seemed to offer me exactly what I wanted. Activity year round on a scale I'd never experienced before. But would it keep up year round? As summer gave way to fall, I was beginning to notice a decline in what I perceived as evidence for the target species presence. And a new question was beginning to form in my mind, not just how to look for these creatures or what tactics to utilize to create an interaction. No, the question now was, what happens when nothing happens? How long until you abandon ship? Is there a limit to my patience for searching for something that, while present, no longer makes itself known? Uh, we are tonight uh, going to basically create like a campfire in the woods up here. The other time we came into these woods, Mark Matsky and I hiked up this creek bed and then my plan is to go further up the uh, creek bed here and set up a fire and just kind of have him flur the uh, the woods around me and we'll probably do that for a couple hours and then I think he wants to be out here by himself and do some audio stuff and I'll probably head off somewhere by myself as well so I think tonight the plan is to do a little bit of work together and then head off on our own but for now I'm just going back up the uh, to where I'll be tonight 
and try to figure out where I want to actually put the, uh, the fire. Here. What's going on, guys? All right. We're going to take the uh, the logs back to the fire pit uh, that we have. We're going to try to mostly burn the, the wood that's in the forest around, but uh, everything's wet here too, so we're going to have to get something going first. So that's what we're doing right now. That's might, why we brought dry wood. It might take a moment. Look at that, bam. Stuff. Heather wants me to go walk into the woods alone. So that's what I'm doing. It's pretty quiet out here right now, honestly. There's, there's not much of anything happening. Um, so maybe we can elicit some sort of response or something if I go up here. Because right now it is, it is quiet. Tell you what, it feels dead to me out here. Now the last two times we've been out here, it feels absolutely dead. I don't know if it's just that they're not moving as much because there isn't the leaf canopy, or if they've moved on from if they've moved on from this spot. There's been small sounds here and there. But otherwise, the activity has declined dramatically from week to week since uh, since the the leaf canopy started coming down since fall hit. It's starting to feel to me like there's nothing out here. I hope that's not the case. That's how it feels. By the way, that is how this stuff actually works, regardless of what your favorite TV show tells you. Yeah, I thought this was going to be a cool idea, but now that we're down here, I'm like, maybe... I mean, the thing is, I don't know where they stab anything. Yeah, they got a lot of water in there. I mean, I don't know if I'm going to have it before that. Are you hearing, like, footfalls in that way, I mean, I'm hearing something move. I don't know if it's footfalls. So we got a megaphone here. I don't have the attachment to hook it up to the little voice box thing, but I can play the creepy music. You guys want to hear the creepy music? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Are you kidding me right now? That's like barely even cranked 
up. I'm gonna step over here and I'll crank it. Yeah. Can you record with that one? a lot. So the the reason you do stuff like this I think is typically like to draw in curiosity, right? Yeah, I mean, the curiosity of these things. If these things are related to humans or primate life, there's a curiosity. I mean, I think there's tons of evidence that shows that apes are not really, they don't just do things by instinct. They're curious, they're mischievous. I mean, this is seeing monkeys, different types of like, great apes. It seems like a lot of encounters are triggered by people just doing stuff around a fire or in a campsite having strange things happen or visitors let's say so i mean i don't know sometimes you just try weird things like a megaphone see if you know has anyone done a blasting weird megaphone music in the woods out here before <laughs> no i think we've we've call blasted gregorian chanting which was something i did in x and i thought yeah. it was kind of interesting because the night we did it we had Stuff happened. Stuff going on. Um, we did babies, baby crying, right. but we had no responses to either, uh, to either of those things. Yeah. And then last week, I was like just blasting John Denver music for about mm -hmm. an hour. Right. Just because, like, it was I don't know. Quiet, I think and maybe I not John to... Denver. You should try Stomping Tom Connors, yeah. Sasquatch. We'll, we'll get around to it. <laughs> but honestly, I'm just trying to make noise there so then they get curious and come check us out, I think. As I was reviewing footage for this episode, I came across something interesting. A strange light in the forest behind Alexander and I that seemed to be sitting inside the more secluded section of the creek bed behind us. The camera is actually facing away from the cabin at this point, meaning it's pointing away from the only source of light in the immediate area and back towards Simply Forest. What the light might be is anyone's guess, but it's worth pointing out that even in the midst of an investigation that, thus far, had featured no activity whatsoever, there was still the presence of something strange. Okay, and maybe it, yeah, I'd be really curious to see. Obviously, you know, it's just a branch noise, so I can't say definitively anything, but that's the only weird thing that really caught my attention, and she didn't hear it. I. You know, wasn't, wasn't really paying attention to that, I just kind of happened to catch it. But uh, aside from that, nothing super unusual. I know there's a lot of leaf litter here, but last time when I was in that tree stand, I got surrounded by coyotes and yeah. I could not hear them. I, I, if I didn't have the floor, I probably would have had no idea they were there. I was actually shocked how silent they were in this kind of underbrush. Mm -hmm. oh. It's shocking anyway. Did you hear that? Heather? I heard that. What, what? was that? I don't know. It's like a cow moo. Hmm? Where's the floor? It's right in the... It's just keep doing a thing and all of Yeah. Over it here. Yeah, um... You heard a, a noise? See, I didn't hear the... Uh, what did you hear? It was like a... A yell of some sort but not yeah. like human, like, I don't yeah. know how to explain it. It was like, first thing I thought it was like a moo-like, sounds like a uh. okay. I don't know, remember <clears throat> the night we were out here and we kept thinking we were hearing sheep? Yeah. I mean, are there cow farmers around here? There's a cow farm. It's that way. It's pretty far, I'd be surprised if you were hearing
This vocalization at first seemed like nothing more than a distant howl, or even possibly a cow. It's still a mystery as to what it was, but does not appear to be a cow or a coyote. The closest cows would be far too distant to be heard at this section of the property, and the voice seems too deep to be a coyote. The mysterious sound was, again, accompanied by movement on the ground in the forest around the creek bed, but it was nothing that we could definitively state was footfall. We wouldn't have seen you if it had it's shocking anyway. It's shocking anyway. That's the thing, it's a windy night too. So. Mm -hmm. It's been windy the last the last few even the weekend Mark was in here when it was active, it was real windy. He would like leave the recorder out at night and it would just be constant like Yeah. I'd do a couple of alarm more alarm. I heard it too. You heard it too? Up there, yeah. yeah up on the hill. Directly up there. Mm hmm. Cleaning up our campfire, makeshift campfire in the woods here. It's pretty quiet down here, so we're gonna go back to the cabin, I think. We did have like a really clear wood knock earlier from, which direction was that? Back toward the cabin? It was kind of back toward the cabin. Yeah, um, so I think, you know, maybe because of the leaf canopy being so diminished, uh, and the moon being so bright tonight, this might just not be the best place for us to be doing this. They might not feel like they have enough cover here. So I think we're gonna head back and see if we can maybe get some activity back at the cabin or near the cabin. So yesterday we heard what sounded like a very clear knock coming from the hill up behind the cabin on this side over here. There's also a tree limb back here that has been banging around. So you gotta be careful because some of what we hear can be deadfall. So uh, what I wanna do right now is walk up this hill and see if I can look up in this woods because I actually haven't been in these woods before. Um, I mean, I've been in the woods directly behind the cabin, but I haven't been in the uh, inside the pine trees up there. So that's where I'm heading.
we're up behind the, I'm up behind the cabin right now on a pretty steep cliff. Ground is really wet here, so I'm kind of looking for tracks or something. Nothing so far, but I just made it to the uh, to the pine woods, and that's the tree behind me. So, and, and keep in mind, the only reason this is interesting to me, it's interesting because we hear so many wood knocks and stuff from up here. So that's that's why I wanted to come up here. Honestly, we haven't actually walked around up here. But I made it up to the pine forest here. Climbing over this dead tree. Walk in here. I just came out of the forest. Now I'm up behind the cabin. Down here is the forest with the uh, the dead deer we found with Les. And that's also the same forest where the abandoned cabin is. Um, over here is basically the woods up behind where the cabin is. And uh, I guess I'll just walk down the hill back down to I'm standing there. I Wait, so up. so what what did you hear? What happened? I was taking a leak and I just looked up, no noise at all. There's four coyote coming down out of that pine forest I was in earlier, down this way toward me. We had just heard gunshots. Yeah, it was probably after the gunshots. There's gunshots, but they're gone now. They were right running down here, no noise. None. How many? Four. Four? Four of them. Oh. Big. Without a sound, they were moving right on this hill, running perpendicular along the hill up behind the cabin. Cabin's right behind me back there. Right back there. Um, and yeah, now we're up here and they're gone. So. Tell you, this is a wild, wild place. I just did a mad dash up that hill, and I found the the pipeline cuts. Perfect place for stuff to travel or traverse through. Thing is, you got woods on this side, smaller set of woods, but. Coyotes probably went into there. That gunshot would have spooked them. Possibly some sign. They were running. A couple of impressions. It's hard to tell, could be deer. Not easily distinguishable in these conditions. Thought I just heard some yipping over there. Right in there. Might be some in there. No such luck, they seem to be gone. The property here is massive, and neighboring properties are open to us as long as Corwin is with us. Today, he was going to take Alex and I to an adjoining chunk of land for some brief exploration. We'd be heading back to the cave so Alex could get a look before we headed into the dense woods nearby. We didn't really have a game plan here, other than to learn more about the area. It had been a quiet trip so far when it comes to Bigfoot activity, 
But between the coyote run-in and the ongoing pursuit to find a suitable area where these creatures could be bedding down during the winter months, it had been educational. Maybe that's all we'll have for a while, until they start making themselves known again. So we're back down in the uh, area of the cave. Gonna hike back to the cave. Cause Alex hasn't seen it back here. You know Seth on the way back, we could just shoot down a creek and just walk up the hill from inside. Okay. It's not like it would be any harder than yeah. going up the trail. So I'm in the cave, it's uh, there's not enough room to quite stand and I'm probably getting a ton of bugs on me doing that, but uh, it's really warm in here. This would be a perfect place to hide out. There's a little bit of a flowing river. That's the only downside I suppose, but uh, it's pretty spacious for a bear, for sure. For a person, if you really needed to, totally could. Maybe for Sasquatch, I don't know. I don't know what the vulnerability would be in here. Maybe during the winter months might be better. But uh, yeah, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, I didn't really waterproof my boots well enough before this trip. Alex, a lot of people don't think of Ohio as having like a habitat for these things. What do you, what do you think of that? I mean, for these things, gotta, I look at, I tend to look at the other environmental factors at play. So, can a habitat support other large mammal, other large mammals and other prey species? You know, is there a, a chain? Yeah. If these things are just transiting through areas, there's plenty of space in that in Ohio where you could, you could go into to West Virginia, parts of Pennsylvania, Southern Ohio, where there's national forest land. So they don't necessarily have to be in areas like this all the time, transitory, but uh, there certainly is plenty of habitat for other large mammals, bears, deer, coyotes, other things. So I think, yeah, I'd say Ohio probably has suitable habitat if we base it on the model of what other Sasquatch requirements are sort of needed, which is obviously very, unofficial you know there's nothing certainly known but i don't know you get down in here and but there's well but this is like a similar thing to how it's like in I stayed in New Hampshire. We have a lot of wilderness areas, and there's not a lot of sightings from those areas because there's just not as many people. The areas where there's sightings are like this, where you have patches of large tracts of woods in between fields and farmland, and that's where the sightings are coming from. Similar kind of thing here, but maybe here it's just more culturally ingrained in people's minds, like they know of the Minerva story, maybe heard of some of these things. I don't know. You guys hearing something? Did you hear anything? Okay, I thought I was hearing a vocal or something. Is there like gas? Yeah, he there's said he said petroleum maybe. Well, there's there's probably a well or something around. It smells yeah. pretty. I don't know. Yeah, I saw uh, the other day when it was warm before the rain. You could see, you know, oil on the, the water. Yeah, I can definitely smell something funky. There's there's a twofold thing with the bears here. On the one hand, people don't see them often, so the chance of misidentifying 
something for a bear, there aren't very many bears. On the other hand, if they don't see bears often, they might not be familiar with what bears can look like in strange light or strange conditions. Certainly a factor. Less of a risk here with that happening. nighttime which is hard to tell by this camera right now but it's it's getting dark out here we're leaving the uh the woods and alex and i both heard like a pretty clear wood knock yeah I, think, I, was, I, I was walking up here and talking and i heard it right to the back and i immediately turned around and said hey seth what did you hear he said oh, it sounded like i just heard a wood knock i don't want to feed him what i heard so it, it kind of confirms that i heard something i mean could be anything but we have been hearing gunshots, so it could have, it could it could have, have been also a distant, been a distant, distant gunshot. gunshot. For sure. Cannot rule that out. Hopefully this summer we can do some camping and uh, spend a little bit more time in these woods because it's super dense in some areas here. The weekend has passed without incident, I would say. Uh, we had one sort of strange wood knock, and other than that, it was, it was really quiet. I think maybe reality television has sort of pre-programmed us to think that when you go into the woods at any point, you're going to encounter a Bigfoot. Obviously, that is not the case. I've spent the better part of my time as a filmmaker, which is now seven plus years, in locations where there are supposed to be Bigfoots, where there's supposedly Bigfoot activity. The amount of activity I had actually experienced was minimal in that seven years until we came to Minerva. It's probably disingenuous of me to expect activity every time I'm here. And so in that way, I guess this trip was a, a good lesson in the reality of what this is actually going to be like. One thing I'm enjoying doing is exploring the surrounding property and getting an idea of just how much forest there actually is here for them to hide. And getting to show you guys that, I think is kind of a, a, a benefit as well, because this is Ohio. A lot of people don't think of Ohio as being a forested area, but there are these huge parcels of forest like we have here. I'm a little disappointed it was quiet. There was like no, this was a strange experience to be in here and have no wood knocks, no, no weird kind of vocals of any kind, no footsteps in the dark, nothing. It was just quiet, but I think that's reality. <laughs> I think that's what most big footers experience every time they go in the woods. And uh, a part of this is going to be finding something to latch on to that kind of keeps me coming out here beyond just having experiences so that's what i'll be doing for the next few months is trying to figure out what is the thing that's going to drive me into these woods if i'm not experiencing anything
Hey guys, if you're enjoying Beyond the Trail, we just wanted to remind you that you can be a part of helping Beyond the Trail and the Bigfoot Project and all of our other great YouTube stuff happen by backing our 2022 Kickstarter. You'll also get a ton of great rewards and the knowledge that you are helping us create amazing content that you're enjoying watching. You can back the 2022 Kickstarter right now. The link is in the description. You'll be helping everything Small Town Monsters makes become a reality, and you'll also get your name in some of the films that we're putting out this year.